Hi, I'm Daniel Souza and welcome to Aptitude Academy. This is part 3 on lecture on probability. Sometimes when they ask you to find the probability of an event occurring, it's easier to find the probability of the event not occurring and then work from there. To understand this, let's take a simple example. Alright, now when you toss a coin, you're going to have two outcomes. You're basically just going to have heads or you're going to have tails, right? You take a coin, you toss it, it's not going to fall on its edge. It's going to fall flat on one of its surfaces. The one on top is either going to be a heads or it's going to be a tails. So, let's assign some probabilities. Let's say the probability of it turning up as heads is P of H. P of T will be the probability of it turning up as tails. And let's have a third probability saying that what is the probability of the coin landing once I toss it? P of L, right? Landing. Now, which of these probabilities is equal to 1? Now, probability being equal to 1 means the event always occurs. So, which one is always 1? P of L, right? Because once I toss the coin, it's definitely going to land. So, P of L is equal to 1. Alright. Now we also know this, when we throw, when we toss a coin, it's either going to be heads or it's going to be tails, right? Nothing else. So I can say, once it lands, the probability of it landing, right? It's either going to land on heads or it's going to land on tails. So P of L is equal to P of H plus P of T. Alright, now we know P of L is equal to 1. So we can write 1 is equal to P of H plus P of T. Now let's rewrite this equation so that we can use it in some equation later on. So let's say 1 is equal to p of h plus p of not h or bar h, right? Now what this means is not a head. Not a head is basically tail. I'm just rewriting it so that we can use it in some sum later on. So what you're saying is that when you toss a coin, it's either going to be a head or it's not going to be a head, which makes sense, right? Now your final equation, what you can use in a sum is p of h is equal to 1 minus p of h bar. This is very important. Right? So they're basically saying that the probability of it being a head is equal to 1 minus the probability of it not being a head. So what happens is in some sums, this is a little hard to find out. So what we do is we find out this quantity, we subtract it from 1 and that is your final answer. Now that we know the school property, let's move on to our first sum. Problem 1. Two dice are thrown simultaneously. What is the probability of getting two numbers whose product is even? Alright, now for the first sum, we know that we've got two dice that are thrown simultaneously. They're asking us what is the probability that the product of those two numbers is going to be even. So we have to find the probability of it being even. Now, from the previous property, you know that probability of it being even is equal to 1 minus the probability of it not being even. What is not even? Odd, right? So 1 minus P of odd. Now, I'm just going to keep this here. I'm not going to use it as of now. Let's just see how to find out if it is even. Now, you know that an even number, when it is formed by two numbers, right? One of the numbers is fixed to even, for sure. Otherwise, your product will not be even. Right? If one is even, the other one can be odd or can be even. Any of these. So, if you have to solve it by the conventional method, what you're going to do is, you're going to fix this number to either 2, 4, 6, and then find all the possible combinations such that your product is even. Right? Now, that can take some time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go by this method. Let's find the product, the probability of it being odd, right? Let's find P of O. Now, you know that for an odd number to form, right? Both the numbers have to be odd. So there's no odd or even. This makes life very simple, right? We need two odd numbers. Only then the product is going to be odd. So from our first set, right? We have one, three and five. That's odd. Here also we've got one, three and five. So basically to fill this place, we've got three possibilities. And here also we've got three possibilities. So total we are going to have nine possibilities. This is not the number, this is the number of possibilities. Right? So what I'm basically saying is the, the possibilities are going to be 1, 1, 1, 3, 1, 5, 3, 1, 3, 3, 3, 5, 5, 1, 5, 3, 5, 5. So you have nine possibilities where the product is going to be odd. Now see this. Now you know what are the desired outcomes for it to be odd. So let us find P of O. P of O is going to be the desired outcomes for odd, right? 9 upon the total number. Total number for 2 die is always 36. So 9 over 36. This is 1 by 4. This is 0.25. Now we have the probability of it being odd. Correct? Now we can use this property. Because we want probability of the product being even. So what we're going to do is P of E is equal to 1 minus P of O. So 1 minus 0.5, hence the probability of it being even is equal to 
This is your final answer. Problem 2. One card is drawn at random from a pack of 52 cards. What is the probability that the card drawn is a face card? Alright, now for the second sum, what they're asking you is to find out the probability of you drawing out a face card from a standard deck of 52 cards. So, you know that a standard deck has 52 cards, right? So that means 52 possibilities of drawing any card, right? Total possibilities. Now, the information you need to know beforehand is how many face cards are there in a standard pack, right? Now, we know that there are 16 face cards, right? So these are our desired possibilities. Now, if you don't know what a face card is, you need to go and watch my second lecture on probability. I'll link it down in the description below. All right. Now, this becomes one step, right? So the probability of you getting a face card is desired possibilities upon total possibilities, right? So desired is 16 divided by 52, right? 4 4s are, 4 13s are. So your final answer is 4 by 13 is the probability of you drawing out a face card from a standard deck of 52 cards. Let's go on to problem number 3. Problem 3. A card is drawn from a pack of 52 cards. The probability of getting a queen of clubs or a king of hearts is... Alright, now the third sum what they said is you have a standard deck of 52 cards and they're asking you what is the probability of you drawing a queen of clubs or a king of hearts, right? Now this word is very very important. They've said all. If it was and, it changes the problem completely, right? Okay, now what they're saying is you've got 52 cards, right? So 52 total possibilities, okay? Not time pass, total possibilities. Now, we've got 52 cards. Now, what they want is a queen of clubs or a king of hearts. You very well know that in each pack, you will have just one queen of clubs and one king of hearts. So, you've got two cards which are favorable to you, right? So, you've got two cards that are your desired possibilities, right? DP. So, now you've got your total possibilities and you've got your desired uh, possibilities. So, when you want to find the probability of you getting either a queen of clubs or king, king of hearts, let's name it A, the event A, right? Then you're going to have desired possibilities 2 divided by total possibilities 52 right so 1 26 so your answer is 1 over 26 now this is the way to solve it if it's an odd if it's an and i'll show you how to solve it in the fourth lecture problem four the probability that a card drawn from a pack of 52 cards will be a diamond or a king is all right now for a fourth sum you again draw a card from a standard deck of 52 cards they're asking you what is the probability that the card you draw is a diamonds or a king right now things you need to know diamonds is one of the four suits that are there in a pack of cards right spades clubs diamonds and hearts so diamonds there are 13 diamonds in a pack of cards right so you have 13 diamond cards okay and you also know that you have four kings right so you have four kings right one king for each suit right now your desire is going to be 17 right wrong because you need to know that you assigned one king already to the diamond cards out of the 13 diamond cards one of them is already a king so don't add four kings add three more kings right your spades clubs and your hearts so you're going to add three here so your total desired possibilities is going to be 16 right so your final probability of getting either a diamonds or a king is going to be let's say event a it's going to be 16 over 52, right? This is going to be again 4 by 13. Now, here we didn't add 4 kings because your diamond set already has a king. So you add the 3 other kings that are in the pack. So 13 plus 3 is 16. 16 by 52 is equal to 4 by 13. And this is your final answer. Alright, so this is part 3 on lecture on probability. In part 4, I'll be solving many more tougher problems where the concept of dependent probabilities comes in. So make sure you check that out as well. These lectures are completely free and I do them for the benefit of students. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and tell your friends about it. I'd also appreciate it if you share this post on Facebook and help me reach out to as many students as possible. Cheers! If you got a doubt during any part of this lecture, make sure you leave me a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Until then, spread the knowledge.